In this video, we're going to talk about how to run for sheriff. It is a unique office. It's not like any other office that you could run for. It requires a unique strategy and it's not something you're going to find in Google. Stick with me because at the end of this video, I have a free gift. What we're going to cover in this video is the importance of knowing the job, how you find a network of strong supporters that are willing to help you, how you craft a campaign message, how you disseminate that message in the form of advertising, and how you raise the money to pay your campaign bills. We're going to cover all of that. I'm going to start with the importance of knowing the job. This is what makes a sheriff's office unique. You are deep into the weeds of protecting public safety. Most sheriffs do road patrols. Most sheriffs in their offices help enforce the law. Most sheriffs have large staffs that are trained to respond in cases of emergencies. Many sheriffs run jails. That is a complicated mess because each and every day, sheriffs who have jails are having to transport dangerous criminals to court hearings and depositions, to meetings with lawyers and back, and they've got to do that safely. Here's the point of knowing the job. Voters intrinsically know that the job that you're running for is very important to their safety. And if you don't know what the job entails or you sound clueless, they're not going to take you seriously as a candidate. So first step, if you don't already know, go to the website and look at all the responsibilities the sheriff in your community has and make sure you're familiar with them. The second aspect of running for sheriff in a political campaign is developing a network of strong supporters because here's the truth, nobody who ever runs for office gets there by themselves. So the two kinds of networks I'm going to mention here, one is your own, your family, your friends, your relatives, people who know you and like you, people that you may have served with in civic and community organizations, people that you may know from your church or other activities that you've been involved with in your community. Now, where do you find these people? Well, three places that you could start is scroll through that contact list in your mobile phone. You'd be surprised at the number of names that end up there. Take a look at your Facebook friends and see how many of them that you know personally that might be willing to help uh, or volunteer in your political campaign. Take a look at your LinkedIn contacts because it's full of bright, passionate people if you're like most people. The second network that you'll need to develop are what I call the stakeholders. These are people who care passionately about who wins an election for sheriff. They care passionately about who holds the office. So most sheriffs are partisan races. That mean you're, probably means you're either a Republican or a Democrat. Well, the people in your community who care passionately about that might include political party leaders. They might include elected officials who belong to the same party that you do. There are special interest groups that care passionately about who sits in a sheriff's office. You want to know who they are? Look at who has endorsed previous candidates for sheriff or given them money and you'll find them there. The two other groups that you might want to take a look at in terms of building a strong network a lot of civic and community leaders do care about who sits in the sheriff's office. And in some communities, there are important ethnic groups that like to be at the table in discussions with the sheriff. Between these two groups, people that you know and the stakeholders that if you don't already know them, you should take the time to get to know them. Using both of those, you should be able to develop a strong network of supporters who will help you either by giving you money or endorsing you or volunteering to help you in your political campaign. Number three, make sure you are an expert on your jurisdiction because it's very difficult to prosecute a campaign when you don't know your market. Now, where do you look and to go find that? Take a look first at past turnout patterns 
in elections and get a guesstimate at the number of people that you would expect to vote in the year that you are running. Turnout varies year by year and that's why you want to take a look at it. Secondly, take a look at the partisan identification of the people in your jurisdiction or the county where you're running so that you understand the size and the number of Democrats and Republicans and non-enrolled voters. Dig down and look at the demographics, the age, the income, the race, the ethnicity, the education level of the people who live in your county so that you can segment your target list and make special appeals to what we call niche groups. If you don't do this, you're flying blind. You'll end up wasting money advertising to the people who are never going to vote for you. And it's just good basic politics to take a look and do a deep dive into this subject. The fourth thing I'm gonna mention here is how do you develop a campaign message? Voters will have five basic questions for you. They may not articulate the questions that way, but this is kind of what they wanna know if you're running for sheriff. What are your qualifications? What have you done in your life that gives you the right to ask for some power that affects the safety and security of my family? Have you ever served in a law enforcement organization? Have you ever been a policeman or a sheriff's deputy? Have you ever been involved in law enforcement? Have you ever been a judge or dealt with criminal and civil matters? Those qualifications are important to voters if you're running for sheriff. The second thing is what can you tell voters that lets them know that your values, your moral code, your notions of right and wrong are in sync with theirs? Do you have pictures on your website that show that you care about veterans or school children or law enforcement officers or the health and well-being of a community during an emergency? That says something about your moral code. Third thing is what problem are you going to fix? What policy are you going to advance that would improve the operation of the sheriff's office? What injustice might you correct? How are you going to do the job perhaps with less money or more efficiently? Voters will expect you to tell them that because they want to know what you're going to do for them because intrinsically they know it also affects them. Fourth thing here, your advertising. There are many, many ways to advertise a message that depends on the number of voters that you have to reach and where they get their information from. So I'm going to touch upon a few of those that you need to take a look at. Number one is social media. It's inexpensive, it's efficient, yes, it's time consuming, but it is a great tool to exploit in any contest. Digital ads or internet ads as we call them. Ads that pop up when people are looking for local news or local weather is a great tool now in political campaigns. There is direct mail or what we call persuasion mail. In some communities, radio is still popular. There is CTTV, there is OTT TV, there is cable TV, there's commercial TV be, depending on the size of your jurisdiction. Don't assume that anyone, or don't assume this, that I can just do one and reach everybody I need to. No, you're going to need a mix, and the bottom line is, what is the cheapest way for you to disseminate a message to the people who need to hear your message? The last thing I'm going to mention here is fundraising. Unless you intend to pay for the campaign out of your own pocket, you will need to raise money. I'm just going to touch upon a few of the ways that you can do it. Number one, there's no law against you asking family and friends and relatives and people you know for a campaign contribution. There is also what we call surrogate fundraising, and I've seen it in many campaigns. A good friend of a candidate will say, hey, let me help you. I know a lot of people you don't, and I'm gonna get on the phone and help you raise some money, and I'll bring you an envelope full of checks. That is perfectly legal. There is direct mail. There are Facebook ads. There are 
YouTube videos that you can use to appeal for money. And then there are the tried and true. Cocktail parties, dinner parties, what we call celebrity events. I have a longer video that you'll find in the link below this that goes through each one of these things step by step and I explain exactly how they work. But don't ignore your fundraising. In the link below this video, you'll find a link to a special video called How to Create a Campaign Message. I gave you the basics in this video, but in that video, I go into it step by step by step. Watch it. It will make your message more compelling.